So this tympanic membrane is the partition between the external acoustic canal and the middle ear and we can also say that it forms the major part of the lateral wall of middle ear. Uh, this is the lateral wall. So this major part of the lateral wall is formed by this tympanic membrane. And uh, tympanic membrane is in uh, like if we talk about its position, it is inclined at an angle of 55 degree with this external acoustic canal and itself uh, the clinical importance is that during the process of syringing. Syringing is a process in order to remove any kind of ear wax or any kind of foreign object which may be blocking this uh, external acoustic canal. So in order to remove that, uh, the water is injected with the help of a syringe. That water should be at room temperature or should be uh, lukewarm. Uh, so that water is injected, strikes the upper part of the membrane and remove any kind of debris or any kind of ear wax or foreign object which may be present in the external acoustic canal. And uh, basically, uh, this tympanic membrane is uh, it is formed by the three layers. The outermost is the skin, which is just a continuation of this external acoustic canal. The middle is the fibrous tissue, uh, which is having uh, which is having two types of fibers: the radial fibers and the circular fibers. The radial fibers this uh, moves and joins with this annulus tympanicus part, which will be discussed later. And then the innermost layer is the made up of mucosa. The mucosa which is just a continuation of the mucosa of the middle ear. So the, it is made up of three layers and we can also say that it is having three germ layers like skin is derived from this ectoderm, fibrous tissue from the mesoderm and mucosa from the endoderm. So three germ layers are present in the tympanic membrane. And uh, if we throw a strong light uh, in, with the help of an otoscope, we can see different parts of the tympanic membrane and uh, like the upper part is the pars flaccida and the lower part is pars tensa pars flaccida is called pars flaccida because of because it is as the name suggests it is quite loose and pars flesh uh, this tensa is called uh, tensa because it is having it is uh, quite tense so it's called pars tensa so basically there are three reasons uh, why this pars uh, tensa is called tense and pars flaccida is uh, loose so the three reason like the first one is that due to this presence of connective tissue the connective tissue is present more in the lower part of this tympanic membrane that is the pars tensa part and uh, in the upper layer in the upper part of the tympanic membrane that is the pars flaccida this connective tissue is very less or we can say absent uh, the second reason is due to, as we can see the as we can see this handle of malleus it pulls the membrane inward and makes this pars tensa uh, part quite tense and the third reason is this pars tensa is uh, lodged in a bony uh, sulcus so it also makes this pars tensa uh, quite tense so due to this three reasons uh, this pars tensa is tense and the pars flaccida is quite loose the previous diagram was uh, not very clear so i have made a new diagram in order to explain different landmarks of the tympanic membrane so this is the tympanic membrane of right side so as we have discussed the lower part is the pars uh, tensa and the upper part is the pars flaccida so let's just uh, discuss about this pars uh, tensa part so the outermost part of the pars tensa is quite thickened into a, a fibrocartilaginous ring and this ring is called the annulus tympanicus which is itself attached to this bony sulcus uh, which is present in the periphery and uh, or we can say it is lodged into this bony uh, sulcus and then comes uh, this uh, annulus tympanicus moves upward and uh, forms two folds uh, these folds are called the anterior malleolar folds and posterior malleolar fold and uh, it is attached to this uh, handle of malleus this is the handle of malleus which we can see and the center part of this pars tensa is somewhat tented inward uh, due to this handle of malleus which pulls this membrane inward so due to the, the center part is called the umbo so from different view like we can see from here like this is the uh, part which due to with the uh, handle of malleus which moves the membrane inward so this center part is called the umbo so this is the part which is called the umbo and uh, different shadows that can be seen in the uh, tympanic membrane when we throw a strong light like uh, the shadow of eustachian tube, the shadow of round window and uh, one joint that is called the incudostipedial joint uh, that is a joint between this uh, incus and the stapes. There are three ear ossicles which are present, malleus, incus, stapes. So this is the incus and stapes. The joint between two can be seen uh, that is called the incudostipedial joint. This uh, tympanic membrane is uh, divided into four quadrants. Uh, this, so in the lower quadrant, that is the antero inferior quadrant, we can see this cone of light which gets reflected from this tip of the uh, handle of malleus, and so this can be seen. And 
now let's discuss about the pass uh, flacida part uh, so in pass flacida since it is uh, it is uh, very few structures can be seen like this lateral process of malleus can be seen in the pass flacida pass flacida is actually uh, we we can say that it is present between this anterior this anterior and posterior malleolar fold and the notch of ribness uh, this bony sulcus moves upward and forms a notch to which this pass flacida is attached and from there uh, it is attached to this malleolar fold and so we can say that it is present between the uh, this notch of ribness and the anterior and posterior malleolar fold and uh, it is this pass flacida is another name for the pass flacida is shrapnel's membrane uh, after the name of british uh, anatomist henry jones shrapnel so that was all about the uh, landmarks of the tympanic membrane so now we will discuss about the blood supply the venous drainage and the nerve supply of the tympanic membrane uh, so talking about the blood supply the outer surface is supplied by the manubrial artery and the inner surface is supplied by different arteries for that mnemonics is mums in which u is silent so first m stands for this middle meningeal artery uh, the second m is for the maxillary artery which gives the anterior tympanic branch the p stands for the uh, this pharyngeal artery this that is the ascending pharyngeal artery which gives the inferior tympanic branch and s stands for the stylomastoid artery which gives the uh, posterior tympanic branch to the inner surface of the tympanic membrane uh, now comes the venous drainage. The outer surface is uh, drained by the external jugular vein, whereas the inner surface is drained by the transverse sinus and the venous plexus, which is located around the uh, eustachian tube. And now comes the nerve supply. So for the nerve supply, the uh, outermost, or we can say the lateral surface and the medial surface. So the lateral surface of this tympanic membrane is supplied by two nerves. The anterior. Uh, we can say the anterior half of the lateral surface is applied by the auricotemporal nerve. The posterior half of this uh, lateral surface is applied by tympanic branch of vagus nerve. And this medial surface is applied by tympanic branch of cranial nerve number 9, which is also called as Jacobson's nerve. So this was all about the tympanic membrane. So if you like the video, subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon and share with other medicos. Peace.